Rule against perpetuities. The common law wrap only applies to some potential future interests. To see if wrap applies, it is easier to rule out the future interests which are absolutely exempt from the wrap. Future interests in the grantor are exempt from the wrap, and vested remainders are exempt from the wrap, with one exception, the vested remainder subject to partial divestment, i.e. the vested remainder that involves a class. The reason why the vested remainder subject to partial divestment is not exempt like the other vested remainders is because the wrap considers a class to be vested only when the class is closed. Thus, if there is a future interest in the grantor or a vested remainder, not including the vested remainder subject to partial divestment, you can stop your analysis because wrap does not apply. But if there is some other future interest, then you must take your analysis further to find if there is a wrap violation. The common law wrap is a rule that sets a time limit on certain future interests. The time limit is defined by the perpetuity period. The perpetuity period begins when the future interest is created. The perpetuity period is comprised of two pieces. The first piece is called the measuring life. The second piece is a period of 21 years. The measuring life must be someone who is alive when the future interest is created and someone who affects the vesting of the future interest at the time when the future interest is created. Note, both must be at the time when the future interest was created. For the initial purpose of understanding the basic concept of wrap, a future interest is void if it vests after the perpetuity period. However, the actual standard that you need to know is more strict. The actual standard is that a future interest is void if there is any possibility that the future interest could vest after the perpetuity period, regardless of whether it ends up vesting within the perpetuity period. The easiest way to remember this standard is to reuse the acronym RAP as, if there is any possibility that the future interest could vest after the perpetuity period, then it is rejected, i.e. violated. Whenever there is a wrap violation, you must take out certain language that pertains to the invalid future interest. In doing this, apply the grammar rule. Begin by striking out the invalid future interest. Then, if the conveyance is not grammatically correct, continue striking out preceding language until the conveyance is grammatically correct. In the previous example, O conveys to A so long as A never leaves the premises, then to B. The language to strike out would be, then to B. Notice that the conveyance to A so long as A never leaves the premises is grammatically correct. Instead, if the language had been O conveys to A, but if A ever leaves the premises, then to B, then you have to strike out more language. If you only strike out the then to B part, the conveyance would read to A, but if A ever leaves the premises. This is not grammatically correct. Thus, the language to strike out would be, but if A ever leaves the premises, then to B. This leaves to A, which is grammatically correct. Charity to charity exception. A future interest in a charity does not violate RAP if the present estate is also held by a charity. For example, O conveys to the United Cancer Society, so long as it is used for cancer research, otherwise to St. Mary's Hospital. Since the United Cancer Society and St. Mary's Hospital are both charities, there isn't a RAP violation. Thus, the United Cancer Society maintains its fee simple subject to executory limitation, and St. Mary's Hospital keeps its executory interest. The RAP experienced periodic reform in the 20th century. The types of reform which were adopted by the states are the following. The wait and see doctrine applied a less restrictive standard than the common law RAP. As we already know, under the common law RAP, the future interest was doomed from the beginning if it was at all possible that the future interest could vest outside the perpetuity period. This meant that even if it vested within the perpetuity period, it was still invalid. The wait and see doctrine changed this. Instead of depending on if there was any possibility to vest after the perpetuity period, the future interest was said to be valid if it actually vested within the perpetuity period. The Uniform Statutory Rule Against Perpetuities changed the perpetuity period to 90 years after the creation of the future interest. And lastly, the Cypre Doctrine was applied when the original intent of the grantor failed because of a RAP violation. The court would instead apply a more liberal interpretation that would not violate the RAP. From a previous example, to A for life, then to A's children who reach the age of 50. The children's future interest violates RAP. If a court finds that the age requirement is offensive, then it might change the age requirement to 21, so as to comply with RAP. Finally, to help you keep your peace of mind, understand that applying the RAP can be difficult at times. Even licensed attorneys get the RAP wrong. In one case, the Supreme Court of California held one attorney not liable for malpractice when while drafting a will he inadvertently violated the RAP.